FB for each heart's video. A large thank you to Cameron, Kayo, Aiden, and Vijet Sislav. I hope I'm pronouncing that right for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support to the channel this month on Patreon. You are an absolute legend, my friend, and it is greatly appreciated. And I hope you enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to complete our blocking system. So right now, if I go up and let this channel hit me, uh, I kind of don't play animation. You probably might because maybe you went ahead and put this in, but if I go over now to this uh, error message or warning message, rather, you can see it's taking me to the animator. And if I go to the animator, it's saying we're playing animation. So the target animation here is the problem. So if we go back down in the warning message, it says this is happening on the take blocked damage effect. So obviously we don't have any of these animations in place, which is why it's happening. So I'm going to go ahead now and drop in an animation for all of these different uh, damage types while blocking. So block types, ping, medium, light, heavy, and colossal is stun in this case. So if you guys are using any animation set by us, it will include all the blocking animations. If you're using animations uh, anywhere else on the web or you made them yourself, go ahead and drop them in. And I'm just going to quickly do this and then apply their names and we're going to go from there. So these use a poise damage uh, number, which we don't really have set up to work right now. It's just an empty variable. Uh, and this is stunned, by the way. I'm gonna use this for Colossal if you are using the same set as me. But we're going to set up poise so it will at least work right now for calculating how much uh, or what blocking animation you're gonna play. We're not gonna go ahead and implement the full poise system in this video. We'll probably do that in the next video since we've already started in this one. Uh, but we're going to get it far enough along so it actually plays a proper blocking animation depending on the intensity of the attack. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, before I do that, though, I'm actually going to replace these animations with the straight sword because that's what I'm using as my base controller. And then I'll override it quickly using the medium shields animator overrider controller. So I'm not going to show you how to do all this again, but just real quick, I'll do a couple real fast. I just added in these blocking animations, so replace heavy with heavy, light with light medium with medium, etc, etc. And you want to do this in all your weapon controllers. Whenever you add new animations, set up the base and then add in the overrides. So there we go. I'm playing a block animation right now, though, it's always ping. The reason being that if you check here, we actually don't have a poise damage value on our damage clutter. And it's not just our enemies damage clutter. If we actually go to the base class, there is no uh, poise damage. You can see we have poise damage here. But if you reference it using finding references, the only place it's ever used on the take block uh, damage effect is to calculate the animation. So go to the base damage clutter class and add a header for poise and then add a float or an int. It doesn't really matter to be honest, you can use either um, for poise damage. Now in my game, poise damage is always whole numbers, much like damage, but I do tend to make these variables sometimes as floats um, for calculations. That way I just have to, don't have to cast it as a float and then return it back to it afterwards, but it doesn't matter. So poise damage is equal to zero. And then we're going to go wherever you have uh, physical damage being set and make sure you also set the poise damage. So on your enemies, you may want to make a base poise damage uh, var variable here, which I'm going to do on all my AI. I'll say 25 for now. And then where you have that, you can either multiply it by the attack uh, damage modifier. Or you can give it its own modifier for each attack. That's totally up to you. So in my case, I'm going to make the poise damage multiplied uh, is going to be equated to the base poise damage times the attack modifier. So if the attack is doing more damage, it's going to do more poise damage as well. Again, you can set this up however you want. This is just the way I set it up. Um, if you want to give it its own modifier, that's cool as well. So I'm going to do the same thing quickly with the undead. I'm just going to do this real fast because it's the same process. Uh, and there might be some attacks where you want to have a lot of poise damage, but low damage, maybe like a shove or something. So you might want to give it its own modifier in some cases. But generally speaking, a lot of times when the attack does more damage, it might do more poise damage. It tends to be more impactful, but that is not always the case. So entirely up to you. All right, that looks good. Going to save that here now. And then we can move on to actually assigning uh, the poise damage yeah, for the player as well. We need to set that up on the weapon and all of the damage clutter. So under damage clutter here, the base damage clutter script, where it says check for block, you want to do a damage effect dot poise damage is equal to poise damage. And this is the poise damage on the base damage clutter that we just made. We follow this again with control F and final references, sorry, uh, final references. You can see it's going to take us to damage target. And this is on the damage card script. This is the regular damage. Again, just say damage effect that poise damage is equal to poise damage. This is the damage target function on the damage collider script. And if we find references again and go down, it takes us to the Dirk club damage collider. You might not have this one if you didn't make Dirk, uh, but I'm sure if you have any AI, then you have some damage colliders for them. So again, just place it there. Wherever you're calculating damage, do the same thing, place it there. If we go down again, it's going to take us to the melee weapon damage collider. Um, and you can see we actually already set this up in our server RPC here. It's actually requesting a poise damage. 
So just to make sure we did it correctly, I'm going to follow this chain of logic here and go to the end and make sure this is actually being used and it's not just an empty value. So I'm going to go to definition. This is going to uh, trigger a another function here, a client RPC. And yes, that triggers fine. So this is actually using the poison damage that we passed. So now that we're passing the effect, it will be passed to the function. It's working. So let's go over now to any other scripts that you have it, do the same thing. And this, I think, is my last one. Now we go to the weapon manager and we assign the weapons poise damage by saying melee weapon damage cluttered up poise damage is equal to weapon dot poise damage. And now we are good. Now we save that. I'm going to go back into the, the game here now and I'm actually going to go to my undead. This is live. And if I tweak this setting here now, the base poise damage, which I've just made, um, he should actually make me play a different blocking animation. So I'm going to crank it a little bit and uh, just try to get a heavier blocking animation so it should knock me back a little. So if I go down here now and the variable is called base poise damage, I'll crank up to say 75. That should probably send me using the very heavy or the colossal one. So if I block here now and boom, yes, I slide right back. That is working as intended. Cool. All right, so we have a way to play different blocking animations. What's next? Well, let's go to the process effect under the take block damage effect, and let's make a function for calculate stamina damage and call it just after the damage. We don't have this made yet, so no worries, it's going to give you an error, and let's just write this up here anywhere. So private void, calculate stamina damage. What's this going to do? Well, every shield has a stability rating, and depending on how stable it is, uh, you're going to mitigate some of the stamina damage that you would otherwise take. Now, the way I like to calculate stamina damage, you can give it its own value if you want. Um, this is kind of a I think you have to think about really, depending on how you want your game to feel. But uh, go up and make a header here now for stamina and make a variable for stamina damage. And then make a variable for your final stamina damage because there's going to be your stamina damage that you get that's assigned from the weapon. And then final after all the calculations have been um, done through this effect. And you know you factor in your stability, your shield, and whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to come in here. We're going to do a simple equation. We're going to say final stamina damage is equal to the base stamina damage. Uh, which is whatever you get when you start the effect. So if the stamina damage is 25, okay, it starts off at 25. Uh, and we can also say if the character is not the owner, by the way, return. You don't need to calculate this on the end of someone who isn't the owner because we're only going to play the guard breaking animation if we are the owner anyway. So um, next we're going to make a float for stamina damage absorption. So this is how much we're going to basically mitigate with the stability of the shield. We can do this by saying it's equal to the final damage times the character dot character stats manager dot stability rating. So this doesn't exist yet either, divided by 100. Now remember we were uh, assigned the blocking values when we started blocking. Um, we're also going to assign a stability rating. So if we go to the weapon item here and, and just go all the way down, we have a stability variable here. And if you find that, you can see we don't use it yet. So let's go ahead and give that some use right now. Let's find where we implement our lighting base uh, blocking absorption. Right here on on blocking change, right below that, we're going to say player dot player stats manager. And then we're going to say, you can call it what you want. I'm going to call it blocking stability. So it's very clear and indicative this is for blocking. And we're going to equal that to the player dot player combat manager dot current weapon being used dot stability. So again, the higher this number, the less stamina you will lose during uh, a block action. So if this doesn't exist, so let's go ahead and make that. Let's go to the character stats manager because I'm sure you want all your creatures to have some kind of blocking stability. This is a pretty much shared variable across the board. We're going to put that right under blocking absorptions, call that blocking stability. Now let's go back to our take blocked damage effect here. And I didn't call it stability rating, so we're going to change that to blocking stability. And then we simply take this amount that we've absorbed and we say float stamina damage after absorption. I guess you could call this final stamina damage. That's bad variable naming on my part is equal to final stamina damage minus stamina damage absorption. And then what you want to do is subtract this from the character's current stamina. And then at the end of everything in this effect, you want to check to see if the blocking character has zero stamina, because if they do, it means they're guard broken. So we're just going to say character dot character network manager dot current stamina dot value minus equals stamina damage after absorption. All right, cool. Now I'm going to make check for guard break its own function because like I said, I want to call that last after everything else has happened. So if there's any animations being or attempting to play beforehand, this will override it. You want guard break to be the last thing that's checked for. So we're going to say uh, we're going to make this require a character manager variable. And we're going to say simply uh, if the character is not the owner, then return because the only person that should be checking for a guard break again is the owner. So after we check, all we simply want to do is play an animation. So we're going to say 
if character dot character network manager dot current stamina is less than equal to zero, we want to play the guard break animation. And in the future, when we add the ability to repost, um, this is where you would enable can be reposted as well. But we don't have that right now. So when we get to parrying and reposting, we'll come back and add that in. So we're going to say character dot character animator manager play target action animation guard break oh one true. All right, so we can also uh, basically disable blocking here. So we can say character dot character network manager dot is blocking out values equal to false. And then we're good to go and we can go ahead and drop in that animation. So I'm also going to make a note here. If you want to throw in a sound effect, here is the place to do it. Dark Souls has that cool, and Elden Ring has that cool sound effect that play when you've been guard broken. This is the place you want to insert it if you have a cool sound effect of your own. Actually, you want to insert it before you check for the owner because that way you will hear the sound effect as a client too um, because this logic will still run this part of it here. So put that right before you play the animation. I'm just going to make it a comment right now. Uh, if you have the sound effect, go ahead and place it there. All right, I'm going to save this and I'm going to Minimize this now, jump back to the project, and I have a guard break animation. Again, if you're using any of our animation sets, it, all of them come with a guard break animation, so just go ahead and grab one. Um, and if you found them on the web or you make your own, also just drop it in. If you don't have one right now, that's cool. Drop it in a place, soldier, doesn't matter. Uh, and if you don't intend to use guard break, well, you don't need this. So I'm going to go ahead, drop in on the straight sword, and then override it on the medium shield because that's the weapon I want to test with right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just drop that in. Guard break, I'm going to use O2. And now we can kind of test that and see if it works in the project as well. Um, I'm also going to change the stability of the straight sword to one, uh, just so I can you can really see how different it is, and you can see that it, you will lose more stamina when you're guarding, just to make sure it works. And I'm also going to make sure I call check for guard break here right on the end. So this is the last thing that's kind of checked for. All right, that looks good. I'm going to save that now and we can go and make sure that our stamina damage is working correctly uh, and we can make sure well, I'm going to find take blocking damage first. I forgot to actually sign the stamina damage. So damage effect dot stamina damage is equal to um, and I'm going to change the name of that because it should just be stamina damage, not base stamina damage. Right click rename, not let me do that. OK, I got to fill out the variable first. So you could uh, assign this to poison damage. And that's what I like to do because higher impact equals higher stamina damage. That goes well in my mind. But if you want to give it its own variable as well, you can. Uh, I do that in Nephilim, but most of the time it just ends up being the same as the poison damage. Because again, more impactful attack usually drains more stamina. It takes more to defend against. So I will make a note here. If you really want to give this its own variable across weapons and damage colliders, go for it. It definitely has its place. I have had a couple uses out of it in my own game, but generally speaking, um, most of the time, if you're making a game similar to Elden Ring or Dark Souls, then if you have a high po da poise damage, you want a high stamina damage, so you can kind of use this uh, as a stamina damage. Okay, so I'm going to go in here now and do a block, and you can see I'm guarding against this. I've lost some stamina, like a little bit. Um, it's noticeable, the bar goes down. Now, if I switch my offhand weapon to a straight sword and block, you can see that the stamina damage is going to be, yes, there it is, significantly higher. So I have, I have no stability there. So I'm basically losing all of my stamina uh, guarding an attack. Um, so I'm going to go back over here now again, and I'm just going to I change the stamina to one. There we go. If I have no stamina, you can see the guard break animation plays. Now, before we add sound effects to blocking, there's a great website I will link in the description, um, and it's by GDC here, and they're just giving out a lot of sound effects, like so many, so you can go there and get a bunch of free ones to use in your game, not a problem. So let's go to the weapon item script. I'm going to scroll down where we have whooshes. I'm going to change the header name to sound effects because I'm going to add another array of sound effects here now. So I'm going to copy the variable and change it from whooshes to blocking or blocking sound effects, whatever you want. And this is just basically going to house the sound effects. You can change them for each different weapon type that you have. So I'm just going to call that blocking, save that. I'm going to get out of here now, go to the project. And I'm going to basically take these three impact metal sound effects I have. And I'm going to drag them uh, under here for all my weapons except for unarmed because you can't block with unarmed anyway. But even if you could, it's not going to sound like metal. So it's going to drag all these into here like so. That looks good. And again, unarmed, I will leave empty. Make sure it all went in there fine. Yes, they all have three. Cool. Now I'm going to go back into the take blocked damage uh, effect here. I'm going to say character dot character sound effects manager dot play block or blocking sound effect. Um, so we're going to make this a virtual void because the player is going to handle this a bit differently than a static creature. A static creature is probably always going to have the same blocking sound effects. That's that's all well and good. It might not, but most of the time it probably is going to. 
So we can have that on uh, AI character sound effect manager, just play the blocking sound effects. But for the character, it's gonna be weapon dependent. So let's make this a virtual void so we can override it and change it depending on what we got going on. I'm trying to keep all the doors open uh, for you here so you can kind of tweak this and make everything different as you need it to be. So under the player sound effect manager, let's override that. And how we're gonna do it is we're gonna check what weapon we're currently using because we're gonna be using the weapon that we're blocking with. And we're gonna play it from there. So let's make a player manager variable. Let's override awake. Let's call that unawake by saying players equal to get component player manager. And then we're going to simply say um, play sound effect, which is on the base class. And then we're going to open up these uh, brackets here and say world sound effect manager instance dot choose sound effect from array. And we're going to pass the array of the player player combat manager current weapon being used dot blocking sounds just like that. Cool, that's basically it. Let's save this now. If I go into the game here, and uh, I can hear sound effect for sure, but you can't, so I will play a clip where you can hear it. Here we go, let's try it again. There we go, and one more. There you go, cool. So there you go, guys. You have a blocking system where you have the ability to guard against attacks. You have stamina drain, there's guard breaking. We can expand upon it a little bit in the future when we add the repost, uh, which will be in the parry video. But in the next video, we're going to basically uh, add in our complete poise system. And for those of you who don't know, a poise system is your ability to ignore an attack without being staggered or play a lighter or heavier damage animation upon being hit. It factors into basically the intensity of the hit, much like the intensity of the block. Uh, but the system also works, as I just said, to basically allow you to ignore that stun entirely if your poise is high enough. So. Thank you all for joining me again, guys, this weekend. I hope you all have a lovely weekend. A special thank you to my patrons. It is because of each and every one of you I get to keep doing this. And I genuinely appreciate your support. Seriously, this series could not continue without you. So that's it for me, guys. I will see you in the next one.